In today's video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to create a header using Divi 4.0 Theme Builder. Now the header I'm gonna show you how to design is also going to be sticky and it's also going to look awesome on mobile devices. All right, so before we begin, if you buy Divi using my affiliate link in the video description below, I will give you access to my Divi Blueprint 4 course, which teaches you how to design professional looking websites using Divi. The other way you can also get this course is by becoming a VIP member over at funnelstoincome.com. So head over there, check it out, and it's only $11 per month. All right, so let's dive into the tutorial. So when you take a look here, you can see that I'm running the old Divi header, and this is the default one that comes with Divi. Right, so let's go ahead and start designing this. So I'm gonna come over here, click on dashboard, and I'm gonna come all the way down here to Divi, just hover over here and then choose theme builder. So this is the main interface. The first thing you wanna do is to click on add global header. So I'm gonna click here and then click on build global header. Right, so for this design, I'm gonna build everything from scratch. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this. And we are going to go with a layout which has three columns. So I'm gonna go with this one here because we're going to add a few elements to this header. So first of all, before I start adding any elements here, I'm just gonna save this and then I'm gonna come over here to my section. So what I normally do before I get started is to add a background color and remove the padding. So I'm gonna come over here. So the color I'm gonna go with is, for this example, is just this really dark gray. Next, I'm gonna remove my padding by coming over here to design spacing. And then I'm gonna add zero to my padding here for the top and the bottom. And now you can see that my space here has dis uh, decreased, which is brilliant. So I'm gonna save this. Next, I'm gonna come over here now to my padding of my row settings. And I'm also going to do the same by coming over here to design spacing. And I'm also going to add zero padding to the top and the bottom. And now this has made my header really, really thin and that's how I prefer it. But of course, if you wanna make it slightly bigger, you can just add you know, your padding until you're pretty much happy with it. So let me just bring, it down, uh, bring this down to seven. All right, so that's what I need to do here. I'm gonna save. And then now I can start adding all my modules. And uh, the way we add our modules is pretty much similar to how we use the Divi Builder. All right, so I'm gonna come over here to my uh, module. And the module I'm gonna add here is pretty much the image module because this is what's gonna have our logo. So I'm gonna click here on image and then I'm just gonna click anywhere in here and choose a logo. So the logo I'm gonna go with is, I'm just gonna go with the default one here that we have in our library. So I'm gonna click upload an image. There we go, so that's our logo. The really cool thing about this is well is you can come over here to your link and then you can specify a link. So since this is our main logo for our website, we want that when people click on the logo, it takes us to the homepage. So the link I'm gonna add is right here at the top. So this is the URL, I'm gonna add it over here. Before I save, I can also make a further adjustment. So let's say the logo is way too big and you wanna make it slightly smaller. You can come over here to design and then you wanna click on sizing. So this is where you can adjust the width so as you can see here, I've brought it down to about 60% and pretty much I prefer it that way. Sometimes when you add the logo, it can be um, of a slightly less quality. So if you reduce the size a little bit, this fixes that problem. So that's all I need to do here. I'm gonna save and over here now, I'm gonna add my menu module. So I'm just gonna come over here and select menu. So over here, I have a menu that I've already created. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna remove this uh, color here because we prefer having this menu on a background color that we have on our section. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna make this fully transparent just like that. Now we have a, a different problem. We can't read the text on this dark background. So what we need to do now is to go to design, menu text. So this gives us all our options to customize this. So first of all, our active link color. So this is the link that uh, shows when someone clicks a specific page. So I'm gonna choose this color here from my color palette. And then I'm gonna come over here and choose my main menu color. So I'm gonna go with this because that's easier to read on a dark background. So moving on, the next stage now is to add my font. So the font I'm gonna go with here, in fact, in your case, you can choose any font you want. I'm gonna go with Poppins, okay? So I prefer using that. I'm gonna make it all caps and um, let's make it bold. So I'm gonna come over here 
fact, let's go with semi-bold. So the next stage is you can either increase the size. Let's bring it, let's bump it up a bit to about, uh, let's say, I think 15 is fine. And we can also add letter spacing. I'm just gonna add a little bit here so it's easier to read. So I'm just gonna add one pixel. And uh, line height, you can also add your line height here. So I'm just gonna bring this up to about one point, uh, Let's bring it to about 1.6. So that's our line height, 1.6. So that's looking great. The next thing I'm gonna do is the alignment. So you can decide either to have it centered or to have it right aligned. So I think it looks much better when it's right aligned because then you have the logo on one side, you have all your text on the other side. All right, so what else can we do here? We can also add some icons. So I'm gonna come over here. So if you have a shopping cart, this is where you can add you know, your colors for your shopping cart, but you need to select it first before you can actually add it. So let's come over here to our content, click on elements. So here we can add our shopping cart. So if you don't have WooCommerce installed, of course, you don't need to add this, but you can add it right here and then you can change the color. And also you can add a search icon. So this could be beneficial for the visitors of your website to come in and search uh, whatever they need to search on your website. So I'm gonna leave that on and we're going to customize it. So I'm gonna come over here and click on icons. So as you can see here, I have my uh, my uh, search icon. So I can adjust the size here, but we're just gonna keep this simple here. Let's leave it at 17. Now, the next stage is to work on the hamburger menu. So this is also very important because when you shrink your website to tablet size or a mobile device, you are going to get that hamburger icon. So that is the view in the mobile. So what you want to do as well is to adjust its size and also uh, change its color. So hamburger icon color, I'm going to go with uh, this color right here. Now, if you can't see it, what you may want to do is to click on expand settings and then you just want to go to your mobile view. So now you can see the color is now showing. So you can change around, you know, choose whatever color you want to go with. So I'm going to go with this color here because it looks really nice. Now the next stage is, uh, as you can see here, we also have this drop down that we can customize. So over here, you can go to our drop down menu and look at all these options that we have. So we can start here with our menu, ba uh, menu background color. So uh, let's go with uh, this one here. And then we want to have our menu line color. So let's go with this color here. And as you can see, I'm just choosing colors from my branding. In fact, you know what? For the drop down background color, I'm gonna go with this, okay? So that looks much better. But of course, you have many more options here that you can go with. Right, so now that we have all this in place, I'm gonna save. And then we're gonna take a look here at uh, something else that we can add. And this is to actually have it without a background. So I'm gonna come over here, click on background, and then set this to transparent. Go back, click on Twitter, set the background to transparent. And you can also give this a color, you know? So let's go with, um, in fact, let me just uh, save that. So let's say you want to give these icons a color. You can also do that by coming over here to design icon and we can add our icon color. Now you can see instantly, I've just added my color there and that looks really, really nice. And it's also following the colors from our branding. So right now I just have two, let's add one just to make it a bit more balanced. So I'm gonna come over here and instead of having this as Twitter, I'm gonna choose Instagram. Get rid of the background and there we go. Those are our three icons. Okay, so I'm gonna save this and save this one more time. So now, as we can see, we have a slight problem here on this logo. So let's go in and add a bit of margin. So I'm gonna click here on design, spacing, and I'm gonna add a bit of margin just to center it. Okay, so that looks much better now. Okay, so let's go ahead and save. So pretty much that's our menu. Now there's a few things that you can also do here. You can make this full width if you want to, but now the setting for that is over here on row settings, okay? So you click here on design, sizing, and first of all, you have to change your width here. So you can make it 100% or 96%, whatever it is. And our maximum width here, again, that can be 90%. Now let's take a look at our menu. So now you can see here, now it's really taking, you know, majority of our space here on the screen. So I can also see here that we have quite a lot of space now left over here to the right. So uh, what we may want to do is to go in and fix that by, choosing this option here. So I'm gonna go with this. So now you can see we've added a bit more space over here. So that, that's looking much better. Okay, now at any point, if you decide to get rid of uh, any of these modules, it's easy, you can just go in and get rid of it. All right, so I'm happy with this. 
I am going to save it. Then I'm just going to close it here and save it. Now let's take a look at how the website looks now in a new tab with our new header. There we go. So that's our brand new header now. If I go to shop. Okay, that's our shop right there. And our header is going across the whole website. Now there's a problem that I'm going to show you here, which is quite annoying. So let's enable the visual builder here so I can show you the three views. Right, so if I go to uh, my tablet view, you'll notice that my menu here is all over the place. And that doesn't look really nice, to be honest. So let's fix this first problem. So I'm going to come back over here. Let's go into our global header. So to fix this problem, what we need to do is to go into our row settings and add a bit of CSS code. So I'm going to come over here to advanced custom CSS and on the main elements, I'm going to add this display flex. So what this CSS code does, it makes sure that every time we go to a different um, screen size, everything stays in one line. And that's really cool. Let me show you that. I'm going to save this, close it here, save and exit. And I'm going to save it one more time. And then I'm going to come over here to my shop, refresh the page. Okay, so let's go in and change our view. Look at that. So now we don't have that uh, staggering of all our elements on the main header. So everything is next to each other and we have our social media follow and we can also do our search. So we can go in here and start searching. Okay, pretty cool. Now there's something that I noticed. When I click here on the hamburger, you can see that this is behind this information on my page. We can also fix that by coming back over here. Now there's two things that we need to do here. When I scroll this, you can see here that uh, everything just disappears. Let's say we want to make our header sticky. So that means we want our header to stay on the top as we are scrolling through our website. So that's the next thing I'm going to show you how to do. So to make our header sticky, let's head over back to our global header here. Right, so let's go into our section settings, advanced, custom CSS, and this is the CSS code we need to add. And by the way, if you want to use the exact same CSS code as I'm adding here, I am going to leave all the CSS onto the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. And also I'd like to give credit. I can't remember who it was, but uh, this code was uh, uh, supplied on the live stream that we did last time. So um, unfortunately I can't remember the name, but anyway, this is how you do it. So you add your CSS code here on the main element of your section settings. Now there's also one thing that you want to do here, and this is to make sure that your menu is above everything that's on your website. And that is done by coming over here to visibility and setting your Z index to something very high. I normally just set it to 999, click on save. And uh, we're also going to save this one more time. And now when we exit our builder here and save, if we go now to our website, hopefully this should work. Right, so I'm gonna fresh, refresh this page and um, let me log out so you can really see the full menu. So if I start scrolling, notice what happens. That stays on the top and it's above all the content. And again, as you can see, I can just scroll and my header stays at the top. Okay, so now let's test it and see if it looks nice on mobile devices. So I'm just gonna grab one corner here and just start dragging it. And now straight away, we can see that everything is showing. And if I continue, that's how the tablet view is going to look like. So that's our header here. We, got, we have our logo of which if we click on it, it takes us to the home page, and we have all our elements. We can search and we also have our social media icons here. Pretty cool. So that is how you create a custom header, which is fixed and also looks great on mobile and tablet views. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any tips that you have uh, in order for our headers to look great, please leave them in the comments box below and I'll add it in my next tutorial. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and also head over to funnels2income.com. See you in the next video.